Okay, so let us move on to our next lesson, and that is the idea of conditionals or uh, branching programs. So what do I really mean? Well, I actually mean that I want to ask questions about the boxes, about the variables. I want to check to see if the values in those boxes have some kind of relationship. Um, are they equal? Is one greater than the other? Um, are they different or not equal? Uh, is one less than? Is one greater than? So it's a very simple concept, however, it's extremely powerful because it allows us to write programs that makes decisions um, based on some condition being true. So whenever we do programming, we always look at these uh, relationship or comparison operators. Not equal, greater than, equal, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Again, these are operators that you have seen before from your math class. All right. So for example, if I have a 19 in the variable called first, and if I also have 19 in the variable called second, then I could ask a question such as, um, is first not equals to second? In other words, is first different than second? So that's a valid question I can ask. And obviously, uh, the answer to that uh, would be false, right? Um, they're not uh, different. They are the same. So in programming, uh, we say that not equal is, we put the exclamation point and the equal sign. Equal, we use two equal signs together. Less than, greater than, and of course, greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to, okay? Um, you might not have seen these last two or these first two. However, in your math class, you would have definitely seen these two in the middle, okay? All right. So again, we're asking questions about the values inside the boxes, inside the variables, okay? So for example, I could have negative three and zero. And obviously I could ask questions, um, you know, and I could even say um, the second, which is zero, is greater than first, which makes sense, right? Um, zero is greater than negative three. So notice all I'm doing is putting one of these uh, six operators in between the two variables. Okay, right. Again, I could say uh, second not equals to first, and obviously that is true. All right, uh, second is different than first. Okay, now how can we make this more useful? Well, we can say we can ask the question. So I could say, is second greater than first? Now, since I'm asking a question, I know that I will either get yes or no. And in programming, we don't say yes, we say true. And we don't say no, we say false. So is second greater than first? Well, zero is greater than negative three. So obviously, that's a true statement. Notice I said statement. So it's a true statement, okay? Uh, what about um, is second the same, right? Two equal signs means the same, equal to. Is second the same as first? That's false, right? That's false. Um, is first less than zero? Well, that's obviously true, right? So notice, um, I can also compare a variable with a number, okay, with an integer. So I can compare variables with other variables, and I can also compare variables with numbers. 
So again, um, I want to talk about this um, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. So whenever you see something like this, right, greater than or equal to, it simply means that uh, you have to do two tests. Okay, you have to check to see if um, it's greater than or if they're the same. Okay, so you're doing two tests. Likewise, if I have less than or equal to, I need to check to see if it's less than or if it's the same, equal to. And here's the rub, here's the thing you must remember when you're checking uh, these. If one is true, then the entire thing is true. Okay? So if it's greater than, then automatically everything is true. Um, if it's not greater than, but it's only the same or equal to, then everything is still true. So that's what, I, what, that's what I'm trying to get across. It's two things they're checking for. However, since you're using an or, if one of them is true, then the entire thing is true. Right? Let's see how that plays out. So I could ask the question, is second greater than or equal to zero? Well, let's check to see if it's greater than. So is second uh, zero greater than zero? No, that's false, right? Zero is not greater than zero. So that's false. But we're not done yet. I have to do the second part because remember it's an or. Is it greater than or equal to? Let's check the equal part. Is second equal to zero? Yes, that's true. Zero is equal to zero. Zero is the same as zero. That is true. So even though the first check failed and the second check passed, it means that everything is true. So it is a true uh, statement. Okay. So, why did I go through all of this? Well, because I want to talk about the whole point of making a decision. Okay? And then taking an action. So, in programming, we tend to want to find out whether some test is true or false. And if it's true, we want to do some action. And if it's false, we want to do some other action. Now here's the thing you must remember. You can only do one of the actions at any given moment, okay? Only one action you can do. Either this one or this one. All right? So you can't do both at the same time. That's like when you're, you're running or you're driving and you meet a fork in the road, you meet an intersection, you can only take one or the other direction. You can't take both at the same time. And so that's what we're trying to show here. If it's true, go this direction. If it's false, take this direction. All right, and that's what I mean by branching, okay? Okay, so let's see what this looks like in terms of uh, C++ programming, okay? So we don't say is anymore, we say if, okay? And then the check that we're checking for, we put it inside uh, parentheses, okay? Inside parentheses. So here, I'm saying, if second is greater than or equal to zero, and inside these curly braces, this is the action I want to take. So this is the path I want to take if it's true. Okay? So in this case, if this turns out to be true, I want to do this. Okay? Now, in most cases, uh, we also want to have a path when it's false. So to do that, uh, we use what is called an else, okay? So in programming, the else means that we're taking the second path, 
okay so it's the false path so if this is true you want to do this otherwise if it's false then I want to do these two things now notice I can do as many actions as I want here if it's true I'm only doing one action here if it's false I'm doing two actions okay and of course uh, I want to mention one thing okay all right and I'm going to show it again the path if true and this one the path if false okay now what happens if I have multiple paths so instead of only two paths I have three or four or five paths okay what do I do well it's quite straightforward we still start off with if however for the second uh, path we say else if and then we do the check okay and if it turns out to be true then obviously we'll do the action and finally if all the paths turn out to be false then we will do the last one okay where in this case we're going to do one thing so this brings me to a very important point okay and i will illustrate this um, soon whenever you have this conditional okay even though you will have multiple actions the program will only execute or follow one of them so it will either do this one or this one or this one it will never do all of them so that's the one thing you need to be mindful of whenever you're doing a check a conditional only one of these uh, actions will be taken okay so let's see what this looks like so i'm going to head over here to python tutor since this allows me to show you what it looks like so i'm going to visualize okay i have a simple program here um val is two and i'm checking to see if negative will print or zero or positive which one will print and then i have some extra code at the bottom okay okay now the key thing I want you to look at is the program will only ever do one of them. So the program will either do line 8 as the action or it will do line 10 as the action or it will do line 12 as the action. Only one of them. So let's check. So we have val being 2 and so now the computer will check. It will say okay is val which is 2 less than 0 well we know that that is false right so this is a false statement which means the computer will skip okay excellent so now it's looking for a true right it's looking for a true the first true it finds it will execute that so it says is um, 2 the same as 0 well that's false too so it will skip and so now it will simply print positive why does it print positive well because everything else failed this failed this is false this is false and whenever it sees else it means if everything else fails do this one and that's why it does it okay now if i uh change the number for val to let's say um zero okay then we notice that when we execute um it will print line 10 okay again it will only ever do one of them okay so this is failing right zero is not less than zero now here zero is the same as zero so it will do line 10 okay and once it does line 10 it will skip and go to line 15 okay 
Remember, it only does one of them inside the if, else, if, else. Only one of them. And then, of course, it just continues working on other code that it finds, right? Such as, for example, um, it prints out val, it adds one to val, and then it prints val again, okay? And then it exits. Now, let's compare that a third time, whereby I make a val become a negative, okay? Just to show you that uh, it will see that the first test is true and it will print negative, okay? This is true, it will print negative. And notice it skips all the other tests because the way it works, it only checks until it finds the first true. If it doesn't find any true, then it will always do this default else. If all else fails, it will do this one. And then of course, uh, it will continue with the rest of the code, okay? Okay, so I hope that made sense. Um, this is the first part of learning about conditionals. The key thing you must remember, all we're doing is doing a check and this check could either be true or false, okay? And if it's true, we do the action that is inside the curly braces. If it's false, we simply move down and check again until we eventually find something that is true. If none of them are true, then we will execute what is inside the else. It's that simple. Okay, I'll see you in the next video where we continue looking at conditionals.